Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice Diophantin equation. In other words, an equation with integer solutions. We have a squared plus 2ab plus b equals 44, and we're going to evaluate a plus b. Once you find the values of a and b, finding a plus b shouldn't be too hard, right? But we're not looking for a cheap solution, or we're not looking for a plus b in terms of a and b, obviously, right? Well, even if they we tried, we couldn't find it directly because there was another problem that I made a while ago, like a plus 2ab plus b is given, let's say it's equal to 44, and then we're looking for a plus b. You could write it as a plus b equals 44 minus 2ab, but that's not what we're looking for. And we can't even do that for this problem because of a squared. So what do we do? I'll be presenting two methods, even though the methods are very, very similar. The first one you're probably going to find more intuitive, but again, it's up to you. Uh, to decide. Okay? All right, let's proceed with the first solution. We have a squared plus 2ab plus b equals 44. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 to make this a little bit more factorable. And that's basically motivated by the coefficient of ab, which is 2. That's kind of like a clue to do that. After I do this, I'm going to try to factor this. Obviously, I can't factor completely, but I can factor partially. What does that mean? It means that I can find the common factor for these two terms, and just leaving out the 2a squared, it'll be 2a, 2b, or not 2b. That was an intentional, by the way. Multiply by 2a plus 1 equals 88. Nice. Now we're going to do something to make it even more factorable. So our goal is to add something so that we have a common term or a common factor. How do we do that? Well, looking at this and this, I realize that if I multiply 2a plus 1 by a, that gives me 2a squared plus a. And I do have the 2a squared here, but I'm missing the a. So I need to add a to both sides. Or I can add and subtract either way. I'll probably do the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, and then at the end, I will subtract it, okay? Like this. Awesome. Now we know that this is factorable. We can take out an a and write this as a times 2a plus 1, and now this is 2b times 2a plus 1, and there's an extra a here, which we'll take care of in a little bit, so don't worry about it too much, okay? Now we know that 2a plus 1 is a common factor, so we can factor that out and we get a plus 2b as the other factor and then minus a equals 88. Again, I'll be doing the same thing. I do need to be able to factor this by grouping, but I do need a common factor. So there's a couple ways to go about it. You can add a number to both sides or subtract a number to both sides, or you can subtract a variable on both sides. Make sense? And the reason why I say subtract is because a is negative or minus a and both of these terms are positive so I would need to subtract so that when I pull out the negative one everything is going to be positive inside the parentheses. Does that make sense? Can you visualize it? I hope so but if not hang in there because I'm about to explain it. So in this case I do not want to go with the variable because that will make a variable on the right hand side which I don't want. I want to keep a number on the right hand side. So I'm going to go with minus one half, but that would be problematic. And a lot of people might question like, why are you doing this? Right? So instead I'm going to multiply both sides by two again, one more time. And hopefully this will give you a better idea. But notice that I did not distribute the two and don't forget to multiply both sides. That's something that I almost always forgot when I was in high school, I was solving systems of equations. And I multiply the variables by something, but then I forgot the constant term and I always got it wrong. Eventually I passed, but anyways, that's a little uh, anecdote there. So now we have the 2a plus 1. Again, look at this and look at this. That tells you, okay, we are supposed to subtract 1 from both sides. Uh oh, we're done with the pages? Are you serious? Did we use 7 pages? No, not really. I guess I forgot to make more pages, so I apologize. I'll probably just erase and go back because I don't want you to, I don't want your eyes to hurt. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and I, I know some people like this, uh, the dark mode stuff and I like it too. 
I, I will almost have like everything in dark mode, by the way. Anyway, subtract one from both sides, you get the following. Now notice that if you factor out a negative one, this will become 2a plus one, which will make this factorable by grouping. So here's what we're gonna do. Hopefully you got the work. Take a screenshot if you want to, that's fine, because I'm gonna erase everything for, except for the last line. And then we're gonna go back and factor. Maybe I can even move it up a little bit so we can kind of go forward instead of going backwards. Or can we just go backwards, is that okay? I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I know it's gonna be kind of weird, but why not give it a try, okay. So 2a plus one is a common factor, pull it out. And now you have two times a plus two b, which is two a plus four b. And then of course you have minus one. So we should subtract one from here and that should be 175. You see, this was the whole thing that we were trying to get all this time. Guess what? We're looking at factors of 175 and two a plus one is actually very easy to check. So we'll start with that. For example, if this is equal to one, that means a is equal to zero. If a is zero, then this is zero then 4b minus 1 is supposed to be 175. That means 4b is 176, which means b is equal to 176 divided by 4, which is 44. So if a is 0, b will be 44. And from here, a plus b would be 44. But that's not the only value because there are other factors of 175, such as, is it divisible by 3? Hmm, I don't think so because 1 plus 5 is 6, but 7 isn't divisible. So three is not gonna work, maybe five. If two a plus one is five, then this whole thing, uh, I mean, that means a is equal to two, so this is gonna be four. And this is gonna be 175 divided by five, which is 35, which means four b minus one, actually it's supposed to be the whole thing, Never mind. Subtract four, that's gonna be 31. Four b equals 32, b equals eight. So b is equal to eight if a is equal to two. That's just another pair, which gives us a plus b equals time. You see, once you find the values of a and b, you can easily, easily find a plus b. That's fairly easy to do. And are there any other solutions? I'm gonna leave it as an exercise because I need to go back and do the second method with the limited space that I have. Sorry about that, I totally, totally forgot. Normally, I will give myself seven or eight pages at least because I most of the time use two methods, but don't worry, we're gonna fit it. Second method is actually really cool because it kind of gets you to the answer faster. And, but it's hard to see what I'm talking about. You'll see in a little bit. So notice that we multiplied by twice, like by two twice, right? So why not multiply everything by four, right? Of course, after the first method, second method will seem a little easier, just a tiny bit. And notice that we get to 176 real quick, right? Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little bit of hocus pocus. A lot of uh, creativity is required here. And here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna go ahead and subtract 2a and then add 2a. And then we're gonna subtract one from both sides to get 175. How, how on earth, like, why are you doing this, right? Why on earth are you doing all of that? to get to the answer, easy, right? Why did the chicken cross the road? It's that type of question. So here notice that 2a is a common factor and then we get 2a plus 4b minus one and then one, 2a plus 4b minus one. Again, this was a really nice strategy to get a common factor, but it's really, really, really hard to see. But guess what? These kinds of problems appear on math competitions all the time, Olympiads you need to be able to see these things. In other words, you need to have an eye for these things. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.